Today we're going to compare the Aventon Aventure to the Velotrek Nomad 1. These are both fat tire e-bikes, both extremely popular. They both cost about 1500 bucks on the dime. Although I do have a discount code for the Velotrek Nomad 1. You save 60 bucks on that one with my code. And at first glance, they look very similar, which they are, but there are some very key differences. And I'm going to sum that up for you very quickly here. We're going to do a side-by-side -side race, I guess, throttle only. So I'm going to show you the performance differences in just a moment, which is significant. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the geometry. So for starters, the Nomad 1 is going to be the more comfortable, relaxed riding geometry of the two bikes. If we get these bikes side by side, you can see the saddles are pretty much lined up back there. Uh, the handlebars on the Aventon are just a little bit more forward and the Nomad 1 have like a curve back. So it puts you in a more relaxed, upright riding position on the Nomad 1. The difference is somewhat subtle, but also noticeable. When I'm riding these two bikes, the Nomad 1 is definitely more of the cruiser bike and the Aventon Adventure is a little bit more aggressive seating position. Now the handlebar height is pretty much the exact same on both the bikes. These have a little bit of like a riser bar. These ones are just naturally higher on the Nomad 1. In terms of like saddle height on minimum height, they both come up about the exact same high and on maximum height, they actually both come about the exact same high as well. Both of these bikes have a 750 watt rear hub. One has more torque than the other, which I'll show you in just a few. This is a Bafang branded one on the Aventon. Velotrek actually has a proprietary branded hub motor. Both of these bikes have eight gears, a Shimano Acera shifter on the Aventon, Shimano Altus on the Nomad. Both have eight gears. Shifters are like this on both of them. Eight gears on the Nomad, shifters are the same. Honestly, in terms of shifting, there's absolutely no difference that I can notice. They both have front and rear fenders. Plastic on the Nomad, metal on the Aventon, no performance difference really. Both have hydraulic disc brakes, both have excellent brakes. The levers are slightly different from one to the other, but I'll show you the performance in just a few. Both have front suspension, looks a little bit different, but they have adjustments on both bikes. This one looks a little nicer, but I mean, they both perform pretty much the same. Same travel, I believe. Both have four inch wide tires. Aventon Adventure has thumb throttle on the left. Nomad One has thumb throttle on the left as well with the little rubber thing here, which is a little bit nicer. I should mention the Nomad One does have ergonomic style grips. So your weight is distributed and it makes it a little more comfortable. Whereas the Adventure has rounded hand grips. So kind of again, more of like an aggressive style. We'll talk about the batteries in just a moment, but the Adventure has a side mount battery while the Nomad One has a removable battery that mounts on the top. Honestly, both are perfect as long as they don't mount from the underside, both are equally convenient the way I see it. Both have great displays. Cabling is pretty neat on both of them, but let's get them outside and I'll show you the performance differences. Throw the Nomad One in here with the collection and get this bike out for a ride. I guess I should mention this is the step over frame while the Velotrek is the step through frame. Each bike comes in both variations. Pretty much the step through frames are just a little bit easier to get onto while the step over frames, they just have a little bit more frame integrity if you're doing more aggressive riding. Also, both these bikes weigh almost the exact amount of weight. There's a difference in the battery weight, which I'll talk about in a moment. One little quirk about this one is you have to press this button to actually turn the battery on before it'll actually turn on when you press the power button. The Aventon does have a color screen that's a little bit fancier as you'll see in a moment. The Aventon gives you a battery percentage in terms of an actual percentage as well. So riding the Aventure. Now this bike is a class two e-bike as it ships. You can modify up to class three, which I did. All that means is the throttle on this one will help you up to 20 miles per hour and pedal assist up to 28. Although we'll see that it does go faster than 28. So the first significant performance difference in the Aventure versus the Nomad is the throttle response and the cadence sensor response. Now this is the cheaper Aventure. They do have the Aventure 2.0 now that has the torque sensor. This is the cadence sensor, which the Nomad also has a cadence sensor. They both have five levels of pedal assist. I'm gonna just show you pedal assist five. If you wanna see my full review, I have a full review on both these bikes. This is just a comparison of the two. So on pedal assist five, max performance unleashed throttle. When I press go, ready, go. Throttle response on this one definitely ramps up very slowly, 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. And this bike will cut you off under throttle only at 20 as a class two e-bike should technically do. Now, if you let off that throttle and start to pedal, 
the bike will begin to assist you again all the way up to 28 miles per hour. Although the Aventon, a performance characteristic of this bike is, this is like a higher speed bike. If you want a bike that goes really fast, this is gonna be the ticket for you. This one tops out at about 33 miles per hour. And if we pull up the GPS app here, we can verify that the speedometer actually does read a correct speed on this bike. So I'm going, well, pretty close anyway, 30, according to GPS in my left hand. However, the significant thing to note about this bike is the lag in throttle response. And there are pros and cons to this. So I would say that the Aventure is more newbie friendly uh, where you can just get on this thing and mash down the throttle. And even on Pedal Assist 5, it just ramps up that power nice and gentle. It doesn't jerk you around at all. However, it can be a little bit annoying to the more advanced user or, you know, somebody after you have some time on the bike, you might want access to all that power right away, say for like a hill or something, which let me show you that. The other thing that I find slightly annoying about this bike is the lag on the cadence sensor. So I'm not pedaling at all. And now I'm pedaling. Now the power's kicking on. And now it's starting to really ramp on. When I stop pedaling, it, you know, it turns off pretty much immediately, but now I'm pedaling. Now it's ramping on. And now we're pretty much full power. So as I've been reviewing this bike, I find it's just kind of something you get used to and you just kind of got to adapt your riding style and start pedaling, you know, about a second or two before you want that power on the original Aventure. This is not the torque sensor one. And I have to say that that lag on the Aventure is pretty significant compared to most of the e-bikes I review. Now, from what I can see, there is no watt meter on the Aventure. Um, I do like having a watt meter just so I can see what the, the bike is outputting. But now what we're gonna do is the 20% hill grade test. This is a relatively very steep hill. And just to demonstrate the hill climbing ability of this bike, full throttle, no pedaling, just what can the bike do under its own power and torque? Now this bike can not quite do the 20% grade under throttle only from a stop. Now doing the same exact hill with about a eight mile an hour rollout and then full throttle now a little bit before the hill, power has chance to kind of ramp on and start bringing us up the hill. Now the bike can handle the 20% grade just barely. So in general, the Adventure is kind of like the higher speed bike that's less suitable for climbing hills out of the two bikes. Although. Both of these bikes are relatively strong hill climbers compared to most fat tire e-bikes. As soon as you start to put down a little bit of your own power through the pedals, obviously you'll be able to climb hills much better. I'm just showing you the power of the bike on its own. Now would probably be a good time to point out, I do weigh 200 pounds. So if you do weigh less than that, it will perform better, obviously. Now to comment on the battery of this bike, it is a 48 volt system, as is the Nomad One. This is a 15 amp hour battery, and it weighs about one pound more than the Nomad One. The 15 amp hour battery pack on the Aventure is slightly larger than the Nomad One. However, Choosing between these two bikes, I don't think that that should honestly really be a number that you focus on. They're so close in total watt hours that I think it's a pretty much negligible decision if you're deciding between these two. I think what it's really gonna kind of come down to is the, uh, the riding position that you want as well as hill climbing versus top speed. Another thing I probably should have pointed out a little bit earlier is this Aventure comes in multiple frame sizes. I'm on the large, but you can choose this bike in size small, medium, or large. So, so if you're somebody who's on the really short end of the spectrum or the really tall end of the spectrum, you might find it really beneficial being able to choose your exact frame size. Another thing about the Aventure is this actually has a brake light. It's pretty bright and it's built into the frame down there. When I'm pulling on the brake levers, it lights up. Now, could that brake light be placed in a better position? Of course, it's only on one side, uh, but it's better to have a brake light than to not have a brake light at all, right? So speaking of brake levers, here's what the brake levers look like on the Aventure. 
I actually like the shape of these brake levers better. Uh, they just kind of really hook in on your finger there and they're nice. For a fat tire e-bike, I actually find this Nomad to be relatively nimble compared to a lot of fat tire e-bikes. The Nomad one's not bad either, but this one just kind of seems to have a particular nimbleness about it. That lag on the throttle though is, I really don't like that on this bike. So check it out. It does have 180 millimeter Tektro brakes, slightly different pattern on this bike than the Nomad, but uh, both the brakes are excellent on both bikes. See what I mean about the pattern? These ones have drilled rotors, but they're also 180 millimeter rotors on the Nomad one. Compared to on the Aventon, these are kind of like drilled and slotted rotors. Slotted can kind of give you a slight benefit in braking performance at the expense of wearing down your brake pads faster. I should mention the Aventon does have an app that hooks up to this. I don't find it particularly useful, but if you're into that sort of thing, be aware it exists. So the Nomad 1 also has a nice display. It's not a color display. The pedal assist modes work different and the performance characteristics are significantly different, which I'll show you about now. As mentioned before, both these bikes are available in step over and step through. Step through is actually really nice for getting on the bike and getting on the Nomad 1 right away. This bike just puts you in a more upright, relaxed position with these handlebars that kind of come back. Then you have the ergonomic hand grips that disperse your weight across a wider surface area. So in general, just a more relaxed, upright riding position on the Nomad 1. Now, one of the first things you notice about this bike, uh, even on Pedal Assist 1, when you give it full throttle, you get access to the power relatively quickly compared to the Aventic. On Pedal Assist 1, it does give you a little bit of a ramp up from a stop. So when I'm completely stopped, Pedal Assist 1, full throttle, 300 watts, and then, and then it gives you all the power after a few miles an hour. The other significant difference about the Pedal Assist modes on this bike is they cut you off at different speed limits. So on Pedal Assist 1, you can full hold the throttle all the way down and it cuts you off at 11, but if you put it on 2, then it'll let you go all the way up to like the next speed tier, which is like 14, 15 miles an hour. The Aventon doesn't have that feature. However, when you crank it up to pedal assist five, this is where you start to see the real difference in performance. Now, if you look at that power watt meter there, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not for sure. We'll display the time here up on the screen. So we'll do full throttle right now. And boom, that thing just hits you with like serious power right away we're like pinned at like 1200 1300 watts 20 miles an hour so this bike accelerates you significantly faster than the aventon adventure we're gonna do a side-by-side -side race i guess throttle only tim my brother here weighs considerably less than me how much do you weigh right now 150 and i weigh 195 so significant weight advantage on the aventon but we're gonna Yeah. Yeah. Where that just like slowly ramps up. However, the downside potentially is this bike kind of electronically cuts you off at 25.5 miles per hour. So for you speed demons out there, you might want a bike that goes slightly faster. Now, GPS is actually showing that this bike is topping out at it's saying 25 on my GPS, 24, 25. You're gonna get a little bit more top end speed on the Aventon Adventure compared to the Nomad 1. Now, one thing I will point out is when you are going that fast on an e-bike, once you start to hit, you know, 23, 24, 25, 30 miles an hour, the faster you go, the faster it's gonna drain your battery. Basically, exponentially faster because of wind resistance is, 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 is it takes a lot more power input to maintain that higher speed on e-bikes. On electric bikes, speed kills range. So I actually forgot to show you an example of the brakes on the Aventon. You can watch my full review for that. I'll give you a little brake test on the Nomad. Oh, I locked up the back one by accident. Uh, front brake is on the left and pull. I mean, both of these bikes have excellent hydraulic brakes compared to most 
e-bikes I've reviewed on the market. So again, the most significant performance difference between the Nomad one and the Adventure is Adventure is more top speed focused. Nomad one is better accelerator and better hill climber, which we're about to see here. Crack open the gate to this 20% grade pedal assist five. We're gonna do throttle only, no pedaling. Ready, go. And the Nomad one just has the torque to pull us straight up this hill. Boom. The Nomad One is one of the strongest hill climbing bikes I've reviewed on this channel. That is for a 750 watt hub drive rear motor. Now this is also a 48 volt system and there is a very slightly smaller amount of amp hours, energy, watt hours in this battery. However, it is so insignificant. Like I said before, I don't think that it would be a deciding factor between these two bikes. I mean, we're talking about the difference of like one or two miles in range probably. Here's what the blue color frame looks like in this bike. I know they have a variety of colors for this bike. The seat on this bike is also wide. Pretty much both of them have a, a wide seat. Uh, this one does kind of have like some little grooves built into it. The Aventon doesn't have those grooves, but honestly, um, they're pretty much the same seat, really. There is a little USB charger down here on the Velotrick, and they have that same feature on the Aventon. As far as pedal assist lag, I am not pedaling and non-pedaling. Now the motor kicks in. Not pedaling, pedaling, motor in. So this one has a slight less of a delay. You get that power a little bit more instantaneous on the Nomad One. Both of these bikes do come with three amp chargers. So that is the preferred over the typical two amp charger you see on a lot of these bikes because it charges your bike about 50% faster than a two amp charger. Both this bike and the Aventon are top performing that tire budget friendly e-bikes in the $1,500 price range as far as I'm concerned. As far as range claims on either of these bikes, you're gonna get about the same range. If you wanna see what range I got, you can watch my full review on either of these bikes, link down below. Also, I do have a discount code if you'd like to purchase either of these bikes in the description box. And if you found this video helpful in making a decision, of course, I would appreciate your support if you did buy through my link in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, drop a comment down below with any questions or comments or what bike you think is better. However, if neither of these bikes are for you, you can watch this video here next.